Using 2D apps on the Quest is amazing. It's truly a wild experience to be watching Netflix or scrolling Instagram on a 100 inch theater screen in my bedroom. But there's some things that just don't have an app. I couldn't play Cyberpunk on my Quest if I really wanted to. And so today I'll be showing you how you can get that experience on just about anything that can output to a display. I've got three options for you here today, ranging from built straight into Meta Horizon OS to a little bit of extra hardware that makes it a lot more flexible. Without further ado, let's get started. These first two options here are solely for Mac and Windows systems over a wireless connection. If you're looking to use a hardwired display cable or you want to use a Linux system like the one I've got behind me, skip to this timestamp to see how you can use HDMI link. Meta Remote Desktop is the easiest way to get a massive virtual display for your computer. It doesn't require much setup on your desktop and it's built straight into the OS, making it easier than any other option to get started with. In terms of headset compatibility, it's a bit hit or miss. In the store description, they only state Quest 3 and Pro, but in the supported devices list, it has basically every Quest they've ever made. Although considering it's just a built-in program, if it's already on your headset, it probably works. On your headset, there's no initial setup required at all, so you can take that off and head straight to your computer. Head to oculus.com slash desktop Yes, oculus.com, they haven't updated the URL yet, and download the installer from there. If you're on macOS, run the package file that the website downloads and wait for the installer to finish running, entering your system password when it's required. The app should automatically run after it completes. Once you've installed, you'll need to log into your Meta account to link it to your headset, then grant all the required permissions for it to function properly like audio, accessibility, and screen capture. Once you've granted the permissions, relaunch the app. Setting up Windows is even easier than macOS considering you don't need to set all those permissions. Run the installer that the Meta site downloaded and that's it, there's really no other steps there. Just log into your Meta account once it's open and that's it. Back on track for both operating systems, now at this point you should be good to put on your headset. You wanna make sure you've updated to the latest version of Meta Horizon OS to make sure this is working properly and open up the remote desktop app. If you don't have it, make sure you're not just looking at installed, maybe it's in all apps and uninstalled from your system. And if it's not there either, try searching for the app in the Meta browser and finding the stalling from there because it doesn't show up in the store when you search for it there. If that doesn't work at all, your headset might just not be supported. After you've opened the remote desktop app, you should see your computer available there to connect straight away. If it's not there, make sure you're on the same network as your computer to start off with and make sure both your computer and your headset are linked to the same Meta account. Select your computer and you should see connect in the headset. If you're on macOS, quickly take off your headset and accept the extra permissions for local network access, and if you're on macOS Sequoia, screen capture permissions again. Like any remote desktop or screen capture app on macOS Sequoia, you will need to redo that permission every month. And that's it, you're using your Mac or Windows system with an easy built-in just works experience through Meta Remote Desktop. I typically find that Meta's solution usually works best for macOS wireless setups, but Windows works very well as well. If you are running Windows 11, it should be even easier to connect at some point in December, when Meta should be launching their collaboration with Windows to basically just give you Mac virtual display on the Quest you'll be able to look at a Windows 11 system and just tap on connect. That'll also give you the ability to launch multiple virtual monitors. Uh, whether that's coming to macOS yet, nothing has been said. You can use Immerse for multiple virtual monitors right now on macOS and Windows, but I figured that was kind of outside of the scope of just use a big display in your headset for this video. Now, if you are looking for something that gives you a bit more customization over your streaming setup, or even just something with nicer immersive experiences, Virtual Desktop is the option for you. It is a paid app coming in at 25 US dollars or 40 Australian, but it does fit a much needed gap for enthusiasts looking for a streaming PC solution. Virtual Desktop is also the only option here that supports for the streaming of VR games over a wireless network, provided you're using a Windows PC. But do consider that Steam Link is a free app that doesn't need any extra software outside of Steam VR that might work better for you. Plus, Virtual Desktop also lets you stream your desktop at 120 hertz if your computer supports it and if your network allows for it. Personally, I tend to find that Virtual Desktop works flawlessly on Windows and not so great on macOS, so you probably only want to try this on Mac if you have a Windows system as well or you already own the app. Virtual Desktop luckily supports every Quest headset. The initial setup on your headset is pretty simple. The hardest part, I would say, is coughing up the 25 bucks it costs to buy the app. Open up the store, then search for Virtual desktop and purchase it. When I shot this, it was pretty high up in the top charts, so you might not even really need to look for it. Open up the app and make sure that your boundary is set correctly. Virtual Desktop isn't built as a 2D panel app like the other two options here, so you will need to initially have a boundary set up until you get into the pass-through mode. Similar to how YouTube's Quest app automatically opens in the immersive mode before you can switch it to a panel. Once that's all set up, you can take off your headset and switch over to your computer. 
on both operating systems, head to vrdesktop.net and download the installer that corresponds with your system. If you're on macOS, mount the disk image file you've just downloaded and run the package inside. Once you've run the installer and entered your password where it's needed, the app should just open itself up. Grant all the necessary permissions for audio, screen capture, and accessibility, and restart the app after you've granted them all. If you're on Windows, run the installer and accept the UAC prompts when they show up. The install process is essentially entirely unattended from there, and you just need to wait for the app to launch. On both operating systems, you'll need to enter your meta username to link the program to your headset. Make sure you click save to apply those changes once you've entered it. If you have any other standalone headsets, you can also enter their applicable usernames there if you plan to use it across different headsets. Once that's done, put on your headset and select your computer within the app and wait for it to connect. You might need to reload the list by grabbing the empty space and pulling down if it doesn't show up. If you've refreshed and it still doesn't appear, make sure you've entered the correct meta username within the desktop app and make sure you've saved it. If you're on macOS, you'll need to quickly take off your headset to grant those extra permissions again for local network access and to bypass system screen capture. If you need to, you can press the menu button on the left controller to access more video streaming settings. Make sure you select settings and not streaming because streaming is for VR games. That'll let you configure things like your frame rate or your bit rate. If you're on a VR capable PC, you can use that menu to configure your streaming settings and also to launch your VR games. And any computer can use it to customize the environment or how you control it, like whether your hands can control the mouse cursor. Ooh. New DJI mic just launched. And that's it. You're using your system in a really nice virtual environment with tons of customization over how it runs. But what if you need something even more reliable and performant? What if you're using a Linux system like the Steam Deck behind me, or you want to use a console, or maybe your phone, or literally anything? That is where MetaQuest HDMI link comes in. Assuming you have a supported USB capture card, this will display anything over a HDMI connection as a massive screen within your headset. It works under any network conditions, including entirely offline, and it provides the most reliable experience with the most consistent quality and latency depending on your capture card. HDMI link supports the Quest 3, 3S, Pro, and 2. So sorry, original Quest users, you won't be able to use this one. While the other options here only needed extra software, this does require extra hardware in the form of a USB capture card compatible with both UVC and UAC. What are they? I don't f know. Personally, I've been, I, I do know. I'm not. I'm not that. <laughs> Personally, I've been using the Genki Shadowcast 2. It supports up to 1080p at 60 or 1440p 30, although HDMI link only does 1080p, so just use that one. And it essentially turns a capture card into a much smaller form factor device, similar to something like an Amazon Fire Stick. It includes a HDMI mail connector built right in, so you don't need to bring a HDMI cable everywhere you go, just a USB-C one. They don't have any knowledge of me on my channel, but if you want to pick up your own, you can grab a Genki Shadowcast 2 for 50 US dollars at the Amazon affiliate links in the description below. These help support the channel at no extra cost to you, so I would greatly appreciate it. Alternatively, you can grab cheaper capture cards that are compatible, but none of them are going to be as good as the Shadowcast for the price it's at. And some of them usually have worse latency, potentially worse quality. I know one I have only does 720p at 60, no 1080, so you're taking a bit of a gamble with those no-name brands. Unlike the other options here, you don't need to install any extra software onto the device, which yes, is useful for things like an Xbox or a Steam Deck, but also might be useful if you're running a work system where you can't install software. On your headset, you'll wanna search for the free HDMI link app on the store. It's currently in early access, but that's not App Lab anymore, so it shouldn't be as hard as it used to be to find. Once it's downloaded, open up the app and connect your capture card to the USB-C port on the headset. USB 3.0 cables are recommended for the best performance, which does not include the cable that came with your headset. The cable included with the Shadowcast 2 I mentioned earlier is USB 3, but some other capture cards may not include a proper cable, so you'll want to source your own if that is the case. If you're looking to use the headset for an extended period of time, like on a flight for example, you might want to consider a USB-C hub that also allows you to pass through power. But that isn't absolutely necessary. Horizon OS will prompt you to open HDMI link every time you connect your card the first time you plug it in. And I would recommend doing this. It's not 100% necessary, but it makes it easier to just get up and going the second you plug your card in. When prompted, accept the necessary microphone and camera permissions, then select from one of the supported resolutions and frame rates determined by your capture card. After you've selected the resolution, just start the stream and connect a device over HDMI, and that's it. This is easily my favorite solution, especially with the Shadowcast not needing an extra HDMI cable. If I ever get a MacBook Pro, that is going to be so nice. It absolutely works the best. Like I mentioned, you can connect anything to HDMI link if it has a HDMI port. So I can connect my iPad, a Steam Deck, an Apple TV, a phone. You get the idea. If you get a black screen, make sure your HDMI connection is stable and working properly. 
you might want to try different USB-C cables or HDMI cables if you can, and also make sure that HDCP protection isn't being used by the device you're trying to stream. If you're here trying to watch movies on your Xbox through your Quest, for example, that isn't going to work here. But at that point, just use the streaming apps on the Quest. I don't know why you'd do that. Unless you like buy movies on Microsoft, but like, why would you do that? So now you know how to connect just about anything to your Meta Quest and get a massive display anywhere you are. If you like this video, hit that button and maybe while you're down there, hit subscribe if you've really liked it. I've got a great video coming up on this Android phone that is currently costing me $1.50 a month for two years. So if you want to be the first one to see that video, get subscribed. You can follow me over on the Meta apps, Blue Sky, and everything else with the links on screen and in the description below. Also, not just wow. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.